Jay Oshcroft has been an attorney, an engineer, and an educator. And he's also served as Missouri's 40th Secretary of State for nearly the last six years. He oversees an office of more than 200 people. He's prioritized election security, making sure that every legal registered voter has the chance to make their voice heard at the ballot box. He says it's time to secure our elections now more than ever as President Joe Biden keeps trying to overhaul elections at the federal level in a blatant power grab. You may know his father, John Ashcroft, one of America's truly great statesmen. John Ashcroft served as the Missouri governor, U.S. senator, and the attorney general of the United States. Please welcome to the show a really good guy, Missouri Secretary of State, Jay Ashcroft. <laughs> You got one of the toughest jobs in government, and a lot of people don't even know that the Secretary of State in the states really has the responsibility of making sure that the elections are fair and that they're, uh, they're all clean. And, and I think a lot of people after 2020 said, boy, we got to make sure of that. You didn't really have any problems in Missouri, did you? No, we didn't have any major problems at all. We had a couple of people we caught cheating. We referred them to prosecution. That's what we do in Missouri. Yeah. As it should happen, what's the biggest challenge that you face when you're trying to make sure that everyone gets to vote, but not anyone gets to cheat? You know, uh, trying to get good laws through the legislature. I think you know a little bit about that from being governor. Uh, but also, it used to be you just worried about running a, a, a secure election and making sure that every eligible voter could vote. Now you have to realize that people don't trust you. And we have to run it not only so you do the first two, but people say, yeah, that was well run. My vote matters. You know, Jay, there was a real transparency in places like Missouri and, and Florida. Uh, people remember in 2000, it was a mess. And that's where the election fell apart between George Bush and Al Gore. And it was contentious. It went to the Supreme Court. To their credit, and I give Jeb Bush a lot of credit for this. He was the governor of uh, Florida at the time. They never wanted to have that kind of embarrassment again. They cleaned up their election. And in this most recent one, third largest state in the country, they had all the ballots counted, certified, and not one iota of controversy. And it was all done by 10 o'clock. And that expands over two time zones. Why can't every state do what Florida and Missouri and most of the states are able to do? Well, that's the lie. Every state can do that if they want to run their elections well. The gold standard of elections is to have as many people as possible go on election day to their polling place, prove who they are, vote, hand mark paper ballots, drop it in the machine. You don't have any problems. Everybody's done at 10 o'clock and nobody really minds if the elections get over quickly. We don't want any more campaign commercials that we have to have. I, I think you're right about that. Sounds like voter ID is pretty important. It's common sense. In Missouri, uh, we're trying to push a law where we would provide a free voter ID to anybody need it. We'll provide the underlying documents. We want to make sure that every registered voter can vote. And when people trust the system, more people will participate. And that's a good thing. There's been this nonsense that uh, uh, people, maybe people of color, people who are poor, they wouldn't know how to get a voter ID. And I, I think what an insult to people because they have every kind of ID already. What, what, is, what is even I, behind that? I, I, it's, it's partisan political gamesmanship. But I think it's racist. The idea that someone, because of their skin color, can't get an ID, that they're not smart enough somehow, that's ridiculous and is abhorrent, I think, to any reasonable person. If, uh, if the Democrats get their way, they would federalize the elections. And I don't think a lot of people have ever stopped and thought about what that means. But it fundamentally transforms the way we do elections in America. And it really kind of throws out the constitutional idea of the Tenth Amendment. Why is that a dangerous thing? Or is it a dangerous thing? Maybe I shouldn't assume it is, but, but from your perspective as a person responsible for ballot security in your state, good idea or bad idea? It's a terrible idea. What does the federal government do well? I mean, if you take out well, the military put it that, that breaks stuff and kills people, yeah. what else do they do well? <laughs> They spend money. They spend money really well. They spend money they don't have. Well, that's true. Money that we don't even have. But, but I think that's an important point that, that you've made is that if they take it over, it'll be a one-size-fits-all 
approach to administering the elections, and that's troublesome. And no one will, tr- no one will trust it. Yeah. And we'll have elections that take weeks to know who the winner is. Look at what happened in New York with the mayoral race, where they couldn't even know the mayoral race who the victor was for weeks. That's ridiculous. Elections aren't for government. They're not for the, the bureaucrats. They're for we the people. You are a part of a true political uh, legacy in Missouri. And, and I say that with the highest respect because there's nobody I have greater respect for than your father, John Ashcroft, your mom, Janet Ashcroft, two of the finest, most godly people. And they stayed godly throughout the entire political life they had. But you grew up in the shadow of a guy who was the governor, then the senator, and then an attorney general. Because I have a little vested interest in <laughs> what it's like to be the child uh, of a political figure, How tough is that on you, the child of the political figure? It has its plus and minuses like everything else. Um, Admittedly, I went to become an engineer because I wanted to get a real job. Um, (laughs) But uh, I love the idea of public service. And I'm thankful for a father that instilled me how important it is to serve others. Well, you've been an engineer in law school. uh, And now Secretary of State, your term will come to an end in a couple of years. You've already said you're not going to run for re-election to Secretary of State. What might we infer <laughs> from that? Is there something else you're possibly looking at? Uh, yes, I, I, I will, I'm happy to continue to serve the people as long as I can, but I don't think I should stay in the same office. You start thinking it's your seat instead of the people's. Um, I think you can probably guess what office I'd love to serve in the state of Missouri. Well, I know this. If you ran for governor, there'd be some of us who would be real excited about that. I I'd hope have it some old have. signs I could use. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> if that happens, I have a feeling that John and Janet Ashcroft will be out there on the campaign trail for you. And I can't think of anybody who would be more uh, uh, just helpful in terms of the credibility. But quite frankly, Jay, you've earned your own credibility. It's not that you will live in the shadow of your father, as great as that is, because the way that you have served with the honor and integrity that you've done, nobody has been able to question the manner in which you've conducted the elections. It's the way it ought to be. And I think all of us are grateful for that. And uh, I, for one, I hope that we will see you on the ballot for a governor in a couple of years. So I'll keep my eyes and ears open over there. Thank you, I really appreciate that. Jay Ashcroft, and we so are grateful for him. Now, if you want to keep up with him online, we have all the links to Jay Ashcroft at Huckabee.tv. You can follow Secretary Ashcroft and his next moves that we have kind of hinted might happen.